I was visiting my grandmother, the first place I went was to Virgil's house. And when we got there, we either going to play football or we're going to be being in, in the woods, you know, hiking or playing or what have you, or just exploring what was out there. Virgil was a Boeing leader, even at that age, because Virgil was um, always in charge. Virgil was an entrepreneur. That's all he's ever, that's all he's ever done. You know, he'd be, all his adult life. You know, he's, he was in the munition business when the war was going on. You know, he's in his little slot cars. He's in swimming pool business. He's named business. He's been in every kind of business around. He's, but he's an entrepreneur from where to go. The exciting thing was to play football, and Virgil was always the quarterback. And he's been quarterback, and ever since he was, I can remember, he was a kid. Whenever he first bought Gwinnett County Bank and decided he wanted to enlarge, he changed the name to Heritage Bank so it wouldn't be such a geographical name. He built 14 branches. And when he did, he opened up a company called Monolith Construction Company to build his banks. That way, by building his own banks, he kept his money in his pocket. He shortly after that opened up Monolith Cabinet Company to decorate the banks, part of his entrepreneurship, just where he always knew how to do the right thing. He's one of the first guys that worked on his nuclear plants, one of the top three licenses to work inside of a uh, nuclear reactor and that kind of stuff. And he worked on paper mills and power plants. And he's quite an innovator. He's, he's smart enough to figure out that where they have all this corrosive stuff, they had to have maintenance. So he, he not only when he get a job, he, he, he'd, he'd leave employees there and he kept on building and building and building, which it, it builds income stream. You know, you got, you got to be an innovator and know what you're doing. Of course, I remember when he was so very involved in Zell Miller's campaign, did an outstanding job in putting that whole organization together and working with that organization. He was a delegate for Clinton, he's a delegate for Bush, and if Harry Krishner got elected, he'd be out the airport ringing a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Zell Miller was a Democrat and he was a Republican. Zell Miller asked him to be part of his staff. He was chief of staff for Zell Miller. They are the ones who uh, originally started the Hope Scholarship and the lottery for the state of Georgia. He thinks that is so important, and he thinks it's important for every child in the state of Georgia because it's a way for them to go to college if they study hard and work hard. He was just so committed, and when you're so committed, uh, you know, failure is not an option in, in, in something, where it's politics or where it's business or family. He's a single purpose. You know, once he sets his mind to something, you can't turn it. And failure is not his, his vocabulary. He's. Uh, a very committed Christian man in his values, in his worship. To me, that's very important, is how you mix that with business. Because I think that tells the whole story about an individual and how successful they really are. You know, he lost his father when he was very, very young. His dad was very young whenever he passed away, and he lost his mother just a few years after that. So family is important to him, and it's great to have a professional career, but you also have to have a home life and a family life, and you have to have respect for your family, especially for your wife and your children, and spend quality time with them as well. And the way he works, he could have a lot of problems in his marriage because he's not home as often as she probably would like for him to be. He has been married to Sarah for 55 plus years, and every time he walks in the room where she is, his eyes light up like it was the first time he ever saw her. It is a true love, it is a lasting love. Sarah supports him 100% in anything he does. He came in at Lake Lanier Islands, and he did total renovation up here on the structure, new streets, new lights. He has put his whole heart and soul into, and he's made a difference out there for him not only for the community, but for the whole state and making this a destination location, uh, which he is involved in every day to make it work. Virgil doesn't undertake anything without finishing whatever his vision is. What it boils down to is jobs. How many jobs has he generated? That's the, that's the measure of a guy. What has he done to generate jobs? He's got honorable mention in that. He's, he's had a lot of different companies, had a lot of employees. His Christian values, faith, his vision, his commitment, energy, excitement, family, all those things are a part of his success that where failure is not an option. He's an entrepreneur personified. You know, he's a tough businessman, but he's but he's he's got a big heart. I believe the young people of today, and especially those involved in junior achievement, can learn so much from a man like Virgil Williams. I tell him sometimes if he ever gets sick, he probably has a headache because his brain is too big. 
I, he's just one of the smartest men I ever knew.